Peas Cavus, Wikipedia article audio. Peas Cavus is a human foot type in which the sole of the foot is distinctly hollow when bearing weight. That is, there is a fixed plantar flexion of the foot. A high arch is the opposite of a flat foot and is somewhat less common. Presentation As with certain cases of flat feet, high arches may be painful due to metatarsal compression, however, high arches particularly if they are flexible or properly cared for may be an asymptomatic condition. People with peas cavus sometimes though not always have difficulty finding shoes that fit and may require support in their shoes. Children with high arches who have difficulty walking may wear specially designed insoles, which are available in various sizes and can be made to order. Pain and Disability Individuals with peas cavus frequently report foot pain which can lead to a significant limitation in function. The range of complaints reported in the literature include metatarsalgia, pain under the first metatarsal, plantar fasciitis, painful callosities, ankle arthritis, and Achilles tendonitis. Cause There are many other symptoms believed to be related to the cavus foot. These include shoe fitting problems, lateral ankle instability, lower limb stress fractures, knee pain, iliotibial band friction syndrome, back pain, and tripping. Diagnosis Foot pain in people with peas cavus may result from abnormal plantar pressure loading because, structurally, the cavoid foot is regarded as being rigid and non-shock absorbent and having reduced ground contact area. There have previously been reports of an association between excessive plantar pressure and foot pathology in people with peas cavus. Types Peas cavus may be hereditary or acquired, and the underlying cause may be neurological, orthopedic, or neuromuscular. Peas cavus is sometimes but not always connected through hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy type 1 and Friedreich's ataxia. Many other cases of peas cavus are natural. Treatment The cause and deforming mechanism underlying peas cavus is complex and not well understood. Factors considered influential in the development of peas cavus include muscle weakness and imbalance in neuromuscular disease, residual effects of congenital clubfoot, post-traumatic bone malformation, contracture of the plantar fascia, and shortening of the Achilles tendon. Among the cases of neuromuscular peas cavus, 50% have been attributed to Charcot-Marie tooth disease which is the most common type of inherited neuropathy with an incidence of 1 per 2,500 persons affected. Also known as hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy, it is genetically heterogeneous and usually presents in the first decade of life with delayed motor milestones, distal muscle weakness, clumsiness, and frequent falls. By adulthood, Charcot-Marie tooth disease can cause painful foot deformities such as peas cavus. Although it is a relatively common disorder affecting the foot and ankle, little is known about the distribution of muscle weakness, severity of orthopedic deformities, or types of foot pain experienced. There are no cures or effective courses of treatment to halt the progression of any form of Charcot-Marie tooth disease. Epidemiology History The development of the cavus foot structure seen in Charcot-Marie tooth disease has been previously linked to an imbalance of muscle strength around the foot and ankle. A hypothetical model proposed by various authors describes a relationship whereby weak everter muscles are overpowered by stronger inverter muscles, causing an adducted forefoot and inverted rear foot. Similarly, weak dorsiflexors are overpowered by stronger plantar flexors, 
causing a plantar flexed first metatarsal and anterior pes cavus. Pes cavus is also evident in people without neuropathy or other neurological deficit. In the absence of neurological, congenital, or traumatic causes of pes cavus, the remaining cases are classified as being idiopathic because their etiology is unknown. On weight-bearing projectional radiography, pes cavus can be diagnosed and graded by several features, the most important being medial peritalar subluxation, increased calcaneal pitch and abnormal Taylor first metatarsal angle. Medial peritalar subluxation can be demonstrated by a medially rotated talonavicular coverage angle. Dorsoplantar projectional radiograph of the foot showing the measurement of the talonavicular coverage angle. Weight-bearing lateral x-ray showing the measurement of calcaneal pitch, which is an angle of the calcaneus and the inferior aspect of the foot, with different sources giving different reference points. Calcaneal pitch is increased in P's cavus, with cutoffs ranging from 20 degrees to 32 degrees. Same lateral X-ray showing the measurement of Miris angle, which is the angle between the long axis of the talus and first metatarsal bone. This example is slightly convex downward. An angle greater than 4 degrees convex upward is considered P's cavus. Foot with P's cavus The term P's cavus encompasses a broad spectrum of foot deformities. Three main types of pes cavus are regularly described in the literature, pes cavoveris, pes calcanea cavus, and pure pes cavus. The three types of pes cavus can be distinguished by their etiology, clinical signs, and radiological appearance. Pes cavoveris, the most common type of pes cavus, is seen primarily in neuromuscular disorders such as Charcot-Marie tooth disease and, in cases of unknown etiology, is conventionally termed idiopathic. Pes cavoveris presence with the calcaneus in varus, the first metatarsal plantar flexed, and a clotto deformity. Radiological analysis of P's cavus in Charcot-Marie tooth disease shows the forefoot is typically plantar flexed in relation to the rear foot. In the P's calcanea cavus foot, which is seen primarily following paralysis of the triceps suri due to poliomyelitis, the calcaneus is dorsiflexed and the forefoot is plantar flexed. Radiological analysis of P's calcanea cavus reveals a large talocalcaneal angle. In pure P's cavus, the calcaneus is neither dorsiflexed nor in varus and is highly arched due to a plantar flexed position of the forefoot on the rear foot. A combination of any OR all of these elements can also be seen in a combined type of P's cavus that may be further categorized as flexible or rigid. Despite various presentations and descriptions of P's cavus, not all incarnations are characterized by an abnormally high medial longitudinal arch, gait disturbances, and resultant foot pathology. Surgical treatment is only initiated if there is severe pain, as the available operations can be difficult. Otherwise, high arches may be handled with care and proper treatment. Suggested conservative management of patients with painful P's cavus typically involves strategies to reduce and redistribute plantar pressure loading with the use of foot orthoses and specialized cushioned footwear. Other non-surgical rehabilitation approaches include stretching and strengthening of tight and weak muscles, debridement of plantar callosities, osseous mobilization, massage chiropractic manipulation of the foot and ankle, and strategies to improve balance. There are also numerous surgical approaches described in the literature that are aimed at correcting the deformity and rebalancing the foot. Surgical procedures fall into three main groups. 
there are few good estimates of prevalence for P. cavus in the general community. While P. cavus has been reported in between 2 and 29% of the adult population, there are several limitations of the prevalence data reported in these studies. Population-based studies suggest the prevalence of the cavus foot is approximately 10%. The term pes cavus is Latin for hollow foot and is synonymous with the terms talipes cavus, cavoid foot, high arched foot, and supinated foot type. Pes cavus is a multiplanar foot deformity characterized by an abnormally high medial longitudinal arch. Pes cavus commonly features a varus hind foot, a plantar flexed position of the first metatarsal, an adducted forefoot and dorsal contracture of the toes. Despite numerous anecdotal reports and hypothetical descriptions, very little rigorous scientific data exist on the assessment or treatment of P's cavus.